All right, so you have the you have the sphere adjusted with some basic anatomical marks so that you're in a position for success. You've used the move brush. You've used clay buildup. You've adjusted the draw size. You've adjusted Z add and Z sub. We've learned navigation, camera positioning, all of that stuff. So we have at this point a real basic understanding that lets us let's lets us do most of the work we're ever going to do. There's a lot more to learn, but this in this period of time you've learned enough to start to move forward and start to get the basic forms intact. But you're going to reach a stage where you want more. So that's what I'm going to set you up for now. And mostly what you what you're the most likely thing you're going to be feeling right now, I'll say it that way, is you're going to be feeling that this is just very pixelated. That's the word everybody uses. It's very broken. Da, 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 ba, ba, ba. Very angular. Now, there's two schools of thought here. It's always two, two schools of thought, right? <laughs> you can leave it angular like this, or you can start to divide it up start to add geometry is what we say. So I'm going to show you how to add geometry in case that's what you want to do. But I'm not going to work with extra geometry because at this stage it complicates things in some cases. Now I actually when I'm working on portraits and I've got it all lined up uh, I'll, I'll, we're definitely going to divide it but just not now. So one thing to notice I'm in the tool palette I've got my geometry sub palette and I already have what they call subdivision levels. These subdivision levels are what we're working with. We can lower this slider and then we're at a very basic level. And you can see it clearer if you hit polyframe. So subdivision level one, I'm going to go higher, higher. You have to turn that on and off to see, uh, to have it, the changes propagate. But you can see there's more tiny boxes. Each one of those boxes is a polygon face. And the more polygon faces you have, the more your detail you're able to catch. So you can imagine this. It's the easiest analogy if you're brand new to this. The easiest analogy is this is basically HDTV versus SDTV. Standard definition is only going to give you a certain amount of pixels in your TV. Most TVs now are HD, which means significantly more real estate. Which means that if, you, if you're looking at a low quality SD on a high quality HD, sometimes it looks pixelated, like this guy does. Because there's not enough of those little tiny faces. In this sense, polygons, and I'm going to call them poly, polygons equals pixels. And this is a theme that we return to again and again in ZBrush. Polygons equal pixels. It's all kind of the same. Because if you're in games, you're really trading polygons for pixels in the game. If you're making something for a film, you're trading polygons in ZBrush for pixels on the big screen. If you're working and creating sculptures for the toy industry, stuff like that. It's a little bit different. You're really creating uh, polygons for each one of those little tiny dots, those measurements that your 3D printer can make. So to add more, it's real simple. You just divide. And now you've got an extra subdivision level. But I'm going to undo that because it's not time for me to divide yet. And I'm going to kind of move forward and start to look at more of the tools that give me more control. And I'm going to be very comfortable with this polygon size, with this pixel. Think of it like the old masters. You're working with the largest polygon possible at this stage because we are roughing in the shape. 